Like, because the danger I want to avoid is like giving someone something that's 30 seconds or whatever and them thinking, well, that's it. And yeah, I yeah, know yeah, the gospel. Yeah. That's yeah. that's it. I've mastered it and I can move on from that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, versus what I'm saying is like you're like bringing someone up to the edge of Yellowstone Park mm-hmm. and you're pointing to it and they're right at the edge and mm-hmm. you're saying, this is it. It's wonderful in there. It's yeah, glorious yeah. in here. And if you go in there, here's what you're going to find. And you bring out, you know, yeah, yeah. a little bit of it yeah, yeah. and they're able to taste it. But then on their own and for the rest of their lives, they can go in and explore the park, explore yeah, yeah. the gospel and, and really um, be a part of that. Y'all, how y'all doing? Welcome to another episode of Bumper Sticker Faith. I am Louis Dooley. This is my man, Sam Key over here. And uh, man, what's up, brother? How you doing? I'm, I'm doing uh, pretty well. What, co- what kind of coffee do we have this morning? Um, it's Ethiopian, Ethiopian. from I Have a Bean. I Have a Bean Coffee. Yeah. We talked about them a little bit. Yeah, that's my wife's favorite variety. Yeah. Uh, she, she has good taste. African coffee, so yeah, she do. Expensive taste. Because it ain't cheap, but it's the best coffee around. <laughs> yeah. It's a bump day, so happy bump day, everyone. And uh, we have uh, an episode today about how to, uh, about the gospel, right? And we were talking about this just now, kind of deciding the angle that we would approach with this. Like the idea that was on my mind was how to share the gospel, Mm because people ask that often. and, And I'm in groups, you're probably in groups where that people want to know, like, just give me these, uh, these three easy steps or, or whatever about how to share the gospel. So um, I thought we'd kick that idea around and that could, this could be a helpful conversation because you have, you're planted in certain um, groups and ministries and you have thoughts and ideas uh, about that. But I guess to start, to continue to start, I uh, want to ask you, the do you remember the first time when the gospel really uh, hit home to you? the the gospel message when you grasp it or or maybe when it grasped you yeah no i can definitely remember it's actually the first time i heard it okay know? yeah which wasn't hearing it was reading mm-hmm. you know it was a bible tract that somebody gave me and so you know i was at a low point in my life i would even say a hopeless point in my life and start reading this bible tract and you know it it articulated the gospel simply um but I believe the Holy Spirit was working on my heart and working on my mind mm-hmm. and, you know, convicting me of my sin. And, you know, it just seemed like this seems I remember thinking this seems kind of outrageous. Mm-hmm. But if it's true, then it's the greatest thing mm-hmm. that I've never heard before. That I've never heard. Yeah. Yeah. The greatest thing I'd never heard at 19 years old. Uh-huh. Um, and you were at a low point, you said. I was in jail. I yeah. just early that day had been convicted of a life in 100 years. Mm-hmm. Or sin is life in a hundred mm-hmm. years. So, yeah, my world was rocked, to mm-hmm. say the least, you know. And, and oftentimes, I think people, when they're, you know, in that bottomless pit mm-hmm. type mode, if you will, they're receptive to almost anything. And so, I, I wouldn't, I would say I was no different. You know, I mm-hmm. was at the bottom of the pit. When I looked up, I couldn't see light, like all of those things. Mm-hmm. But it wasn't a desperation plea for accepting Christ because I wanted to get out of my situation. Mm. That was the difference. That's most people I've encountered that incarceration. Mm. They embrace something mm. because they're desperate and they want to get out of it. And they it. want to bargain with God. Yeah, Maybe yeah. if I do this, God, you'll get me yep. out. Yeah. I embrace it because I wanted my life to be different. Wow. Yeah. You know, and part of that difference, I would say, would be linked to getting out. Maybe, mm-hmm. maybe not. But my thought was I'm never getting out. Mm-hmm. But I want my life to change, mm-hmm. not not just to get out, but because the life I was living has put me yeah. in a place like this. Yeah. I don't like this place, and there may be worse places, yeah. so I need change. I think that's just worth <laughs> that's worth highlighting for people that here you are in that position where most of us would use that mm-hmm. use that moment as a bargaining tool, but you were so captured and convicted by what this was saying about your life before God, Mm -hmm. not before uh, temporal authorities, Mm -hmm. judges and that, but before God. And you realized that you um, 
could get free in that sense, mm-hmm. that you could have uh, a new life in that sense, yep. that God could renew you in that sense. And oh, by the way, <laughs> I'm still in prison too, but you were so thrilled on one end that it um, that that's what you were focused on. Yeah, it was a it was a unique situation. Not like no one's ever had that yeah. happen before, but for me, you know, it was unique. And, mm-hmm. um, and you, my life drastically changed, like immediately. Mm-hmm. You know, it wasn't a question of me not knowing right from wrong. It was a question of me wanting to do wrong instead of right. Mm-hmm. And I just decided that that's, that needed to stop. Yeah, you know, not just from a moral standpoint, but from a this is what God requires mm-hmm. of me standpoint. And it took a while for me to learn what God required of me. It mm-hmm. wasn't like that night I learned everything the Bible had to say about sin and I mm-hmm. exactly got right. You know, it was that sanctification process. But as I was starting to learn, it's like some things I knew wasn't right. Mm-hmm. You know, like fighting, probably shooting people, selling drugs, like mm-hmm. those type of things. It was easy to say, okay, I know that ain't right. I need to stop. Mm-hmm. But like profanity, um, you know, lust. Um, sex outside of marriage, all these mm-hmm. other things that I was doing. I had no idea that that was like unbiblical mm-hmm. or ungodly. And when I learned about those things, you know, a, a few of them, <laughs> maybe one or two, was easy for me mm-hmm. to turn away from. Like selling drugs, I didn't really have the ability at mm-hmm. that time. But even if I would have, I would immediately stopped. But lust and, and sexual desires and things of that nature, desiring to get high, mm-hmm. like those things didn't just leave that easily, mm-hmm. you know, if ever left at all, mm-hmm. you know, some of those things still linger. Mm-hmm. But um, it was a conscious decision I made, and it was me pleading to God to help give me the strength to, yeah. like, not do these things. Yeah, yeah, your desires were changing. <clears throat> yeah. yeah. I was, you know, in another part of the world, <laughs> the same age, Okay. I, I was, uh, uh, yeah, about 19. I was in, in college, <clears throat> and I had to take a religion course. And the, uh, it, was a, it was a secular school, but we still had to take one credit or three credits or whatever of a religion course. And the guy assigned us to uh, read through the Bible, parts of the Bible. And mm-hmm. I remember uh, cramming before class because they always, always would have a quiz over, over the assigned reading. And I was sitting in the library reading the end of the Gospel of Luke. And I got to the part where the thief is on the cross, the guy who was, uh, was mocking Jesus, but then something happened in him. And he, and he looks over at Jesus, who was also suffering on the cross next to him. And I remember just being so caught up in that moment, thinking they're crucifying Jesus. He's like really suffering. He, um, he's out of breath. He's about ready to die. And then this guy has the nerve to say, Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. And then it says that Jesus turned to him and said, I tell you the truth, by the end of this day, you'll be with me in paradise. Mm -hmm. And it just hit home for me right there because Jesus not have enough breath of his own given breath to this random criminal. And then me realizing that this was a criminal who had no opportunity to do anything right to mm-hmm. earn God's favor yeah. again. Yeah. But Jesus said, you're going to be with me in heaven. And it just clicked for me that we're not saved by our good works, yeah. our own righteousness, but yeah. we're must, we must be given it from <clears throat> Jesus. Like there's yeah. something to this Jesus. <clears throat> and Amen. I remember reading that and I just felt this like presence mm-hmm. with me. And I remember looking over my shoulders like, is, wow. is someone, is something going on here? Does anyone else see this? Mm, like, this is incredible. Wow. But that's when it really uh, really hit home for me. Again, reading God's Word uh, yeah. is, is what did it. We just went over that same exact thing in Cook County last Thursday. Okay. And, and in Cook County there, Jail? Mm-hmm, there's a Muslim guy that's there um, that introduced himself as that. And he's always participated, but he never would take one of our books, our Bible uh-huh. courses. And this particular day, he took one, and then he read. We read the chapter together, yeah. so he read some of it, and... That was, I could tell by looking at him, man, like the wheels were turning. You know, at that very part is the one criminal was railing, you yeah. know, and talking crazy to Jesus. Yeah. The other one like, hold up, man. Don't you know who this dude is? Don't like, you realize that yeah. he's done nothing wrong? Yep, yeah. yep. So, um, you know, it's it's a it's a powerful path. Yeah. I use it all the time to debunk works-based yeah. faith. It's kind of one of those passages that if you can filter it through this, then yeah, like I mean, it's, there was it's no the baptism, test. Yeah, baptism, no, yeah. no communion, no last rites, no yeah. good deeds. There was no nothing. There was yeah. acknowledging who Jesus is. Yeah. He acknowledged he was a sinner. He said, we, yeah. we're we dying justly, yeah. but he's unjust. Yeah. So he recognized he was a sinner. 
he recognized that Jesus was someone mm-hmm. that could forgive his sins and, and bring him to heaven because mm-hmm. he said, remember yeah. me when you go to heaven. And Jesus said, today you'll be with me. And paradise. he had pretty limited knowledge, though. Like, that's it. He that's didn't it. have uh, a systematic theological understanding he had no or education. Bible college, yep. seminary, no, none no he so. just said, there's something about this guy. He's a king. Mm-hmm. And he can do something about this. Yeah, yeah. So it's, it's yeah, very it's simple. You know, I, I think I think there's a verse that talks about, like, the gospel, you know, being so simple as like a stumbling block mm. um, to people because it just seems to be so simple. Mm-hmm. You know, and it is simple. Mm-hmm. But people in our minds want to make things complex and we want to feel like it's something that we have to do. Mm-hmm. And Christianity is the only religion where there's nothing you can do has already been done mm-hmm. for you. Yep. So it's great. Now there's another uh, angle around that, that I want to uh, kind of highlight as we get into this. And that's, um, I get pretty annoyed about um, these really simplistic, not simple, but simplistic explanations of, how to share the gospel, mm, right? So okay. I hear this kind of thing all the time. Like it's a recipe? Yeah, it's a recipe. Okay. You just hear three easy steps. Here's, <laughs> here's, you have people claiming, uh, I can sh- I can share the gospel in 30 seconds. You know, you're like, picture yourself on an airplane. It's going down. You have 15 seconds to share the gospel with someone yeah. next to you. Yeah. And can you do it? And if you can't, then you're a horrible Christian. It's yeah. like, I get really annoyed by that mm. because... The gospel isn't simplistic like that. Mm-hmm. It's 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 so beautiful, and it and the whole story is so complex on some levels that mm-hmm. you can get lost in it. Like I know you are just in uh, Yellowstone Park, yeah, around yeah, that area. And like, yeah. what if I were to say to you, okay, Lewis, in fifteen seconds, tell me about Yellowstone Park? Yeah, you'd be like, no, it'd it's, be a waste of my fifteen seconds because yeah. I couldn't do it justice. You can't capture it. Yeah, yeah, and here we have, or or like a symphony, like summarize Beethoven's Ninth Symphony in just three steps. Mm-hmm. Like you yeah. can't do that. And the gospel is so beautiful. Yes, you can on the one hand say it in like one verse, like John three sixteen, mm-hmm. for God so loved the world. But also the gospel is like the entire book of Revelation <laughs> and all its yeah. complexities and wonders and strangeness. Uh, so it, it's all of that. It's, and that's why people spend their lifetime being changed and affected by so it. Is your, so is your issue really with people or you being annoyed with people who are caught up on the three second or 30 second version and they're not doing an extended version at any point? Yeah. Or, okay. Okay. Yeah. yeah. I, and I agree with that because yeah. I think, I think that time is time, right? Mm-hmm. And we have unique time with different people that we encounter mm-hmm. whether it be on a train or uh, sharing an uber ride or whether mm-hmm. it be a family member that we're around all the time like we have different amounts of time with these people we encounter and we should be prepared you mm-hmm. know it shouldn't be well like for instance i was at jiffy lube years ago mm-hmm. sitting there and there was this woman there that was clearly distraught and i just started you know consoling her saying man can i pray for you mm-hmm. and she was like yes and i prayed for her and asked what was wrong and She's like, you know, have you ever been, you know, what do you do in tough situations? I'm like, well, I pray, mm-hmm. you know, and here's why I pray, yeah. you know. So for like maybe a couple minutes, you know, I shared what I do. I shared mm-hmm. why I do it, mm-hmm. you know, and so I shared the gospel. I never saw her again, but, you know, it was maybe a couple minutes. Mm-hmm. And so it was like I actually had been prepared for situations like that to be able to succinctly mm-hmm. like present something to her. Um, because I, I couldn't do it in its entirety, you know, mm-hmm. what you're alluding yeah, to. Yeah. Um, but I can share it to her enough to where if she were to believe what I shared, mm-hmm. like the thief on the cross, mm-hmm. salvation would have been something that she could attain. Mm-hmm. Um, and if not that, there should be enough questions left for her that if she went to investigate yeah. later, she'd be able to really get the yeah. full picture of it. I guess, I guess what I'm saying, and that's a good question. That's a good clarification. It's a, it's as if, like, because the danger I want to avoid is, like, giving someone something mm-hmm. that's 30 seconds or whatever and them thinking, well, that's it. And yeah, I know yeah, the gospel. Yeah. That's yeah. that's it. I've mastered it and I can move on from that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Versus what I'm saying is, like, you're, like, bringing someone up to the edge of Yellowstone Park mm-hmm. and you're pointing to it and they're right at the edge mm-hmm. and you're saying, this is it. It's wonderful in there. It's yeah, glorious yeah. in here. And if you go in there... Here's what you're going to find and you bring out, you know, yeah. a little bit of it yeah, yeah. and they're able to taste it. But then on their own and for the rest of their lives, they can go in and explore the park, explore yeah. the gospel and really um, 
be a part of that. Yeah, yeah. Well, the, the 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 my so my pet peeve. I have a pet peeve okay. when it comes to evangelism. Is so many people are taught by their churches, just invite people to church. Okay. They don't even take the time to equip their people to share the gospel. They equip them to say, "Hey, come to church on Sunday." Mm-hmm. And it's like, dang, man, like there's just a handful of things wrong with that, in my opinion, I won't get into. And so my regret with that lady at Jiffy Lou mm-hmm. wasn't that I didn't invite her to church, um, although that wouldn't have been a bad thing mm-hmm. um, just because I had shared the gospel with her already. If I would just invite her to church and that's it to me, that would been kind of bogus mm-hmm. for me. Um, but to try to like say, hey, um, you know, I was in a Bible study at the time. Hey, you know, if you like to know more, like here's my name, here's my number. Mm-hmm. If you're interested in coming, you know, to learn more about what I just shared with you. Mm-hmm. So, you know, and to me, that enters into the realm of discipleship. Mm-hmm. And so that's how I live my life with the mindset of discipleship. Yeah. And and I, I would say that evangelism is the, you know, the twin brother of discipleship. Mm-hmm. You know, like they go, they go to they mirror each other. You yeah. know, they, they have to go hand in hand. Yeah. You know, one can you can't have discipleship without evangelism, okay. but you can have evangelism without discipleship. Mm-hmm. And I think evangelism without discipleship is not good. Mm-hmm. That's my opinion. So, so they belong together. I think they belong yeah. together. Like if you yeah. think about the Billy Graham Crusades, I've yeah. never been to one, but people I know that have, mm-hmm. they were going around sharing the gospel, right? So doing mm-hmm. evangelistic outreaches, but they would have numerous churches yeah. represented there. Yeah. with pastors and lay people and so on and so forth to capture people's information to try to get them into the mm-hmm. church to disciple them. Mm-hmm. So to me, that's marrying both together. Yeah. But when you just have like open air evangelism where, you know, you go to Chicago on yeah. almost any day, but especially the weekends, you got yeah. the guy with the bullhorn yeah. or you got the guy with signs, you know, yeah. basically turn or burn, you know, they sell yeah. fire insurance. And it's like, can God use that? Surely there's people in this yeah. world that'll say they saw that guy and they listened to that yeah. guy. They read that sign and they got saved. Mm-hmm. So how can I say that's bad mm-hmm. or wrong? But what I can say is like, I think there needs to be more. Mm-hmm. Like a tour guide to lead you through the park. There you go. <laughs> to yeah. show you. Yeah, yeah exactly yeah. right. So instead of just saying, here's the park, come on in and experience yeah, yourself. Yeah. Yeah. Just say, hey, come follow me yeah. and let me show you yeah. and explain to you yeah. all the features in the park. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I actually have a, a a friend. His name's Tim Anderson, and he he has a podcast called Holy Ghost Notes with the drummer from August Burns Red, uh, kind of a metalcore band. And they at at one point in their journey together had this organization set up uh, because they were touring band members, and so th- they would put on concerts in all these cities, mm-hmm. and they were Christian concerts, and oftentimes there would be gospel presentations and that. And they kind of had that conviction, like you just said, we just don't want these kids to make a decision decision now and have no follow up. And so this organization that they were trying to start would, was like a collection of churches who are all on board with this mission and they'd be ready, kind of standing by mm-hmm. so that when kids made a commitment to Christ, then they could refer them to this organization. They could go online and see what churches were in their area that they could go to and, and have further discipleship. Mm-hmm. But I thought that's a good example of an intentional way of um, Amen. providing a park tour guide. Yeah, and no, I love that. That's a great idea. And there's there's organizations that do that. You know, there's a an organization that used to be called National School Project. They just mm. recently changed their name to Decision Point. And they're all about sharing the gospel okay. in middle school and high schools. And so they take Christian college students who disciple and mentor middle school and high mm-hmm. school students, and they do um, outreaches, mm-hmm. and they're all about like you inviting the kids of youth group. So I get an opportunity sometimes to you know go yeah. share the gospel in some of these schools, and then they're high school students, which is amazing, man. They're mm-hmm. they're reaching out to their classmates and saying, hey, come join us at Bible study, come join us at church, at youth group, and like do things together. So it's, it's a great organization. So you get to go speak sometimes to high oh, school I, students. A lot of times. How, how do you approach that? How do you approach a high school group? Um, I share my test. They, they want me to come share my okay. testimony because it's like, you know, I got a kind of checkered background with some yeah. unusual things in it that, you know, kind of grab people's attention. But yeah. I, I really try to clearly articulate the gospel, mm-hmm. you know, right in the middle towards the end of everything, mm-hmm. you know, so I, I kind of, get them hooked by talking mm-hmm. about all the bad stuff I did, mm-hmm. you know, and then I talk about, Hey, here's what hit me, mm-hmm. you know, and here's what the gospel is and here's how I changed my mm-hmm. life. And here's how 
my life has been as a result of mm-hmm. that. And so, um, you know, the fruit that's that comes from it, I really don't know because I'm not, you know, I'm I'm not hanging out with those mm-hmm. churches and those youth and stuff like mm-hmm. that. But um, I get a, I get opportunity quite often, you know, during the school year, different mm-hmm. schools all over the Chicago land area and mm-hmm. even out of the state yeah. to do that. And so it's pretty cool. Another thing I want to say, <laughs> by way of a long introduction, is that uh, apologetics is not the same as evangelism. And yeah. I think that's a good point of clarification. Yeah. Like we think that uh, apologetics is defending the faith. Mm-hmm. So like if you're trying to defend it against um, materialistic Darwinism or yeah. or the problem of evil, you know, all these hard questions that people throw at us, that's apologetics. Mm-hmm. But that's different from evangelism it is but don't you think those so to so to me if evangelism is a twin brother of discipleship i would say evangelism and discipleship is the cousin to apologetics yeah, yeah. And, and here's why because I'm almost my entire life in christ since i was mm-hmm. 19 i have encountered people whether they approach me or i approach them mm-hmm. about something in christianity or something biblical and there's all these other beliefs. Mm-hmm. And, you know, there's no way any one person can become an expert on everything. Mm-hmm. But I found there are usually a handful of things that as I'm sharing the gospel, if you know, if I'm standing up speaking to a group of people, it rarely, if ever, comes mm-hmm. up. But that's not most cases. Yeah. In most cases, You're it's in conversation. control of that, yeah. Yeah, I'm in conversation with people. Yeah. And where the Bible came from. Wasn't it written yeah. by a bunch of men? Mm-hmm. Um didn't Pro- they change it? Proving the existence of God. Mm-hmm. Like those are apologetic topics. Mm-hmm. But I think that every Christian should know those apologetics mm-hmm. pertaining to those things. Because if you don't know, <clears throat> then to me, like how like how rooted is your faith really mm-hmm. in the supernaturalness of God's word and his creation? Mm-hmm. You know, and so for me, I saw I, by, by way of not feeling like my faith being kind of shook. Or me feeling like a hypocrite for believing something mm-hmm. I didn't know. I took it upon myself to learn the answers mm-hmm. to these things because they almost always come mm-hmm. up. There's always if you if you're talking to a group of three or four people where you're kind of having a Q and A session or you're sharing the gospel with them, if they have a chance to ask questions, there's always going to be somebody mm-hmm. in the group to ask about where the Bible came from. How do we know there is mm-hmm. a God? I think we need to know that stuff. Yeah, I, I agree, but. But, but to the, me, that's not evangelism in no, the no. in the like pure sense. And um, but I totally agree with, with yeah, that. And, and I agree with you. Yeah, yeah. it's not evangelism because evangelism is sharing the good news of the life, death, resurrection of Jesus. And I just think that's important to highlight because um, maybe you're not an expert or comfortable with all those apologetic uh, arguments yet. That that shouldn't keep you from. Bringing people to the oh, to the park though, amen, and bringing amen. people to the gospel. Amen. It's, and it's like that. it's like I went to the Yellowstone and I saw some like I saw Old Faithful. Yeah, I saw the Grand Tetons. I couldn't tell you how long those things yeah, been around. Yeah. I can't tell you how that stuff how it works, works. Yeah, but I can come show it to you. Yeah, but if I if you want to know that stuff, then we got to find an expert. Yeah. and then we can both both learn together. Yeah. Um, the reason why, you know, maybe it's the way I'm wired. Or my experiences, but it seems to be when I am having conversations with people, and I would even call this discipleship because these are people I'm seeing, Mm -hmm. you know, time and time again. Mm -hmm. Like the more trustworthy I am to them, the more apt they are to take a leap of faith, so to speak, and believe what I'm saying. And so when they ask me a bunch of questions and I have no answers, Mm Then to me, they're looking at me like, well, you just come mm-hmm. trying to scratch, like you trying to push something on me yeah. and you don't know the answers. Yeah. You're telling me. That, that, that seems like a problem. Yeah. You're telling me about this wonderful place, but you can't answer any questions about it. Yeah. It's yeah. like, how wonderful is it really? Yeah. Then? And do I really want to go there? Y- yeah. yeah, exactly. So, yeah. you know, that's where for me and maybe, like I said, maybe that's the way I'm wired. Yeah. I mean, evangelism. I feel like it's my number one gift. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? So I love evangelism, but but I love discipleship just mm-hmm. as much because to me they go together. And so um, I think that in Jesus and Matthew was at 28 when he commissioned, you know, to the disciples, yeah. but not just them, to all his disciples mm-hmm. even now and forever to go make disciples. Mm-hmm. Like I take that as a command. Mm-hmm. Like if the Ten Commandments says thou shalt not kill, mm-hmm. thou shalt not steal. 
Thou, thou shalt shall go make, make disciples. disciples. <laughs> then I'm taking that literal, yeah. and I'm going to do it. And I think we all should. Yeah. Yeah. So Great. we need to develop some of these tools. To me, these are tools, right? Evangelism is mm-hmm. a tool. Um, apologetics is a tool. You know, and to me, it's the belt of discipleship. Mm-hmm. And these are some of the tools that, that hang on the belt. And probably for most people, they're really interested in apologetics because their own faith is shaky. <laughs> we just need to admit that, too. Yeah, like, yeah. I really got into apologetics when I first became a Christian. And I realized that, oh, it's, I have all these doubts and I want to get answers for myself. Which is great, which is fine. Yeah, yep, yep. Yeah. That's like um, I'm trying to find um, a DVD, The Case for Christ, mm-hmm. because I want to take that and show some guys in Cook County. Um, just because we were, they were on the topic about, you know, this stuff being yeah. real. And it's like, okay, Lee Strobel yeah. um, is a trusted source. I think it's a good movie. I also have some soft yeah. copies of it, so I'm going to take a couple copies in there yeah. and give to the guys. But yeah. they probably, they're not going to read it. May, they maybe one or, per, one or two will read it, but they'll mm-hmm. definitely all watch the movie. You know, and it's just good to learn to seeing somebody else's like um, questions being mm-hmm. answered and then what the result is. That reminds me of your uh, Thief on the Cross conversation. Colin Smith has a good uh, audio uh, format of his book, The Thief. What's it called? Heaven, How I Got Here. Yep. That's such a great book. Great resource about the Thief on the Cross. Yeah, I saw that little play with um, Stephen Baldwin. With Stephen Baldwin. Ba- I did yeah. too. Oh, did you? Yeah. Okay. One All of the right. first. Oh, yeah. He, how many years did he come? I, I don't know. But this a was couple, the, this one was or the first two? year. Yeah. All the time. I, I was there to too. Yeah. yeah. That's cool. Yeah. We didn't know each other then. He did a there. great job. I guess it really like impacted uh, Baldwin's life as mm. he was getting into it. Yeah. Okay. And, um, and just being gripped by it. Yeah. And I, I, yeah, I won't won't say more, but um, yeah, heaven, how I got here. All right, so as we get into like what the gospel is, like the way that I think about it, not again, not in simplistic terms, but in just kind of a a simple way of uh, of grasping it. But each of these, under each of these headings that I have, it's like almost almost endless of conversation and thoughts it could generate. And as like you are given your sharing a little bit about your testimony and story, I like saw each of these things. So the first one, it, it's it's our problem, it's God's solution, and our response. Mm. Those are like the three broad headings. Simple, mm. I'm I'm sure anyone would agree to that. Yeah. Um. So the so our problem, God's solution, and our response, and the, this is a good way for understanding uh, what the gospel is and how to share it with people. But it's also helpful, I've found, for my own personal Bible reading. Mm-hmm. And even if I'm preparing to teach or to preach, like uh, I'll just have this little grid, okay, I'll be looking at the passions and be thinking, okay, well, what's what's the human problem here, mm-hmm. you know, of how they're bucking against God, where they're going wrong? And then what does God do? What's his solution? And then the third, what should our response be to God's uh, mm-hmm. solution? So, uh, So the first one, our problem. This is like the first movement, uh, uh, if you will, of the gospel. And uh, as we're talking about our problem, we're we're talking about uh, uh, some specific things, uh, a specific thing, and but not all problems. But all problems are related to this specific thing. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And the specific thing is sin. That's our main problem uh, before God. That's our biggest problem. And um, the the verse that came to comes to mind often easily is Romans three twenty three. Yep. For all have sinned mm-hmm. and fallen short of the glory of God. Yeah. So, um, and it's not just that we sin, you know, do these individual acts, but there's something. But we're sinners, and that's like there's something fundamentally wrong with us. And it's helpful to be able to. No, it's not helpful. It's essential and necessary for people to see that there is a problem in life. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, that's, I always call that the bad news. Okay. You know, in order to, if you got good news, it's yeah. got to be bad. Because gospel means good news. Correct. So, yeah, the bad so there's news. always got to be some bad. Otherwise, if there's no such thing as evil, then there's no such thing as yeah. good. Yeah, yeah. So, and that's that's a good, that's a, you know, that's a good starting point as you, as I kind of interject momentarily. No, go for it. Um, For years... Because I like when the gospel was presented to me in that Bible track and then yeah. just over the years of, of hearing the gospel presented in different ways, like I started thinking, like, is that the only way to present the gospel? Mm-hmm. You know, my, when I say only way is like 
starting with mm -hmm. the bad news, you know, mm -hmm. and then getting to the good news. Mm -hmm. So it's like our problem, um, God's solution, our response. Mm -hmm. And so it's like, what if for some people you have to like change the order up? Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So in other, yeah. in other words, like it's, it's kind of like, we're all sinners. We're all Romans 3.23, mm -hmm. Romans 6.23, mm -hmm. right? We're all sinners. We're all going to hell. Mm -hmm. And it's like, well, what if we talk about heaven mm -hmm. first? If you know some new person mm -hmm. you don't know, mm -hmm. because that's a positive thing, mm -hmm. you know? And a lot of people believe in some type of heaven, yeah. you know? So it gives you a good footing, mm -hmm. right? It's like, how do we find common ground mm -hmm. first? Yeah. Because if you start off on uncommon ground, what I've experienced and, you know, I'm not some 80 year old person yeah. doing this forever. But in my experience, um, when you start off with negative things first, you know, it, 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 it can turn into a negative mm -hmm. conversation or people are kind of standoffish. But oh, you're one of those guys. Yeah. yeah. But you get stereotyped. Yeah. You know, so if it's if it's a simple like, man, you know, I can't wait to get to heaven one day, mm -hmm. man. you know, for a person that is complaining yeah, about yeah. loss of their job, loss of a loved yeah. one getting into it with their spouse, yeah. their their children, you know, are doing bad mm -hmm. things. You know, it's like, wow, you know, it's great because mm -hmm. one day in heaven, we don't have to worry mm -hmm. about that. And if they say, yeah, mm -hmm. it's like, oh, wow, you believe mm -hmm. in heaven too. Like, mm -hmm. you know, so it's like now we have a common yeah. bond. Like we have something that, that we can both agree mm -hmm. on and then let's work back. Yep. I totally agree. So like, and I wanted to mention that too, that these three steps, like I said, they're, uh, these three movements. They're essential. They're all essential, but they don't have to be in that order. Yeah, yep, they really yep. don't. And, and you'll find yourself in an ongoing, hopefully, relationship with someone, maybe touching a little bit on the second movement, maybe going to the third, back to the first. I find that, yeah, you're bouncing around uh, back and forth. But even in like... Your example of of starting off with heaven, um, I think your dog's barking. Yeah, yeah, man. I don't know. My wife <laughs> up there doing something, so he acting. But, but even that. with um, starting with like the second movement, um, you still were enticing them because it's, they had losses or they had a bad job, so, so you were kind of assuming the problems in there. But yeah. they didn't quite realize the number one problem yet. But that's what. We need to bring them back to. Yeah, you know, yeah. so, I, you know, I, I look at it like, and maybe some people may find this kind of crude, but to me, it's all sales, man. Okay. Everything in this world revolves around sales. Okay. You know, in the gospel, you know, so it's not like some sleazy, like mm -hmm. people that call car salesmen sleazy. Mm -hmm. Some of them are, some of them aren't. Mm -hmm. But, you know, I'm not really trying to sell you something, but it's the mindset. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm trying to figure out the best approach mm -hmm. that you'll be willing to receive yeah. this information that I want to give you. That's vital. Yeah. Vital information. And so it's like trying to sell a car, any product, yeah. you know, it might not be vital, but to me it is because yeah. I get a paycheck if I make a sale. Yeah. In this case is you could turn from the, you know, hell to heaven mm -hmm. if you accept this information I'm mm -hmm. giving you. So what's the best strategy mm -hmm. for me to use so that you'll be open to receive yeah. it? I think it was Blaise Pascal who, kind of created this uh, image of kind of what we were talking about earlier, like painting a portrait or in your mind or whatever of so, of the gospel of so being so great, like there's this yellow, there's this park out there. You've never been to it, but let me describe it to you mm -hmm. and, and helping the people to long for it almost so that they want it to be true, mm, you know? Okay. That they you you paint such a, a positive and great picture of it there that they long for it yeah. and they want it to be true, um, but that would be a case of starting with a second step. Sure, sure. So, uh, but the first movement, our problem, a uh, couple of things more to um, to touch on here is uh, in the Romans verse it says, "For all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God." And as I was uh, thinking about that, and as I think about that. Glory is, there's a C.S. Lewis book, this is how I remember this, called The Weight of Glory. Mm -hmm. It wasn't a book, but it's a, a sermon that he gave, The Weight of Glory. But glory itself, uh, the Hebrew word is kavod, and it ha has a sense of being weighty or heavy, mm -hmm. something that carries a lot of weight in your life. and uh, Or you could say something that your attention is on all the time. And so the verse says, for all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. And so it's like saying, 
our, the, the real problem in our world and in your life is that you give your attention to the wrong thing. Like the wrong things carry the most weight in your life. And that's why our lives are shipwrecked so often and flipped upside down. And, and that's why we're going off in the wrong directions. And that's why we're not, um, we're not able to have peace because we're constantly uh, kicking against the goads, as mm. Jesus said to Paul, yeah, yeah. right? We're, we're, we're constantly just r- rubbing ourselves the wrong way. And, um, and, and God is not at the, the highest point in our life. Where our attention has fallen short of that, and that's, I believe, just an essential part of the gospel to get people to realize that the things that they're doing, like you said um, in your testimony, like people told you that doing drugs and sex and all these things were wrong, and you didn't quite know why yet. But I'm sure it didn't take long for you to realize that when you engage in these. Behaviors. When I engage in things that go against God's will, I just end up ruining my life. Mm-hmm. Yep, absolutely. and it's just very practical thing. Yep, right. When God's not the the weightiest thing in my life, then um, I just I just make a mess of my life. Yeah, we fall all over the place, man. Yeah, I agree with that, bro. And helping people to see that, and I and and I think people, uh, it's easy for people to see that too. Um, I was talking with someone few months ago and he was saying how um he can't stop playing video games and he's up all night playing video games but he just can't stop and i said so wait a minute if i heard you correctly there's something that you're doing in your life that you don't like doing but you can't stop (laughs) doing it he's like yeah that's crazy i'm like then that's a problem right he's like yeah so it's like that's all we need to do is help people to see the problem, yeah. right? And that's what Paul said that the very thing that I do I don't want to do mm-hmm. in Romans seven. So that's our problem. Next movement is uh, God's solution. Yeah. And what is uh, God's solution? What is God's solution? Not first of all, his solution is not to like give us a million dollars or. It's be not a- like all. Oh, it's not like never being sick. Yeah. Um, it's not yeah. prosperity. It's not his solution. There's none of that. His solution is Christ and Christ crucified. Yeah, you know. So that's and that's in fact, something. he'll even employ some of those things that we don't like in order to get us Amen. to the right solution. Amen. Amen. You know. Yeah. Sometimes uh, God sends you a messenger from Satan. Yeah, as we talked about a like couple. Paul said, he sent yep. a messenger to buffet me. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it says like the King James version. Yeah, you know that's the, I like that you mentioned that because. So many times when bad things are happening to people, they see them as bad things instead of seeing them as God's love reaching out to them. Mm. You know, Mm -hmm. and oftentimes that's what it is. You know, the calamity and turmoil and bad things that are happening Mm. in life is God's way of like sometimes shaking us up and saying, hey, wake up. Yeah, wake up. You know, wake up. Mm -hmm. And we see it as God ain't a God of yeah. love because look what he's doing. And sometimes people attribute things that God didn't do to mm-hmm. him. Mm-hmm. You know, that's kind of like a, a story for mm-hmm. another day. But God does reach out to us mm-hmm. in love. And sometimes love um, can be a form of discipline, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. The Bible says he disciplines those who he loves. That's and so, right. You know, God disciplines us because uh, he loves us. He mm-hmm. shakes us up mm-hmm. to give us opportunity to maybe look mm-hmm. up, you know, and that doesn't negate like in my situation. God didn't put me in jail. I put me in jail. Yep. But God took that opportunity that as I messed up and went to jail to say, hey, I'm going to present something to you. Mm-hmm. And he knew my heart would be tender and my mind would be open. I still had an opportunity where I, I could have, I believe I could have chose to to not want to fool with that. Mm-hmm. But instead I chose to, you know, so it was his love in a situation that I caused that was the worst in the world I had ever done. Mm-hmm. He reached out to me instead of judging me and saying, you did these evil things. How dare you? Mm-hmm. He said, man, you need, you need love right mm-hmm. now. You need my arms wrapped around you. And that's what I'm going to do. Mm-hmm. So part of God's solution is his love. Understanding that, um, when you do physical therapy, the physical therapist, <laughs> mm. no one likes doing physical pain. therapy. It's yeah, a lot, it creates a lot of pain often, and um, be, but because they love you and want to love you back into shape, and God is, God is like our spiritual therapist, mm. if you will, our soul, our soul therapist. Um, but um, God's solution uh, in um, Romans three, so right after the Romans three twenty three verse, then you read in Romans three twenty four and twenty five. Uh, those people who've fallen short, 
and are justified by his grace. Mm -hmm. So not by our works, but by his grace as a gift, a gift to us. It's such a, such a practical and powerful verse and are justified by his grace as a gift through the, and so how does it give us this gift? It says through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus. And then how, when, when when did Christ Jesus give us this redemption? What, what, was it when um, he was teaching us? <laughs> was it when, when when he's healing? What was it? But he specifies it says, "Whom God put forward as a propitiation by His blood." So it was done on the cross. So and are justified by His grace as a gift through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus, whom God put forward as a propitiation by His blood. That's God's um, solution. And it includes a cross, but there's so much more uh, that you can get into and that you can explore in the, uh, in the forest of God's grace, uh, like sanctification and adoption and mm-hmm. regeneration, all these great things, uh, all part of um, God's <clears throat> solution. But we need to help people to see that God really does love them. Amen. Amen. He loves them. And that, yeah, when people, I remember hearing that too for the first time in my life, that God loves you. Once have have a personal relationship with you, that's mind blowing. It still is. Mm-hmm. So then that leads us to the third movement, and it's our response. So you have our problem, God's solution, and our response. Yeah. So you need all these movements, not necessarily in that order, but you need all three of them to be complete. We need to respond to God's solution in some way. Uh, and how do we respond? I think of the old hymn, "Trust and Obey." For sure. so there's no other way. There's no other way. And that's where the verse goes. And mm-hmm. after Romans 3, 23, 24, and 25, it says to be received by faith. Yeah, amen. Right? To be received by faith. You got to trust it. You got to respond. Um, other ways to um, respond and as you trust and obey, go to church, <laughs> right? Yeah, what um, about? Pray. Confess your sins. Well, these are all ways to respond. Read the Bible and other good Christian books. Be joyful. Yeah. I want to talk about joy in a few future episode because mm-hmm. it's a command in the New Testament. Yeah, uh, I fall short of that one. <laughs> Be joyful and serve. Serve, yeah. right? Any other ways that you can think of? I mean, that pretty much covers in the category of responding. Yeah, I mean, <clears throat> fellowship. I mean, going to church would be some type of fellowship, but I would say, you know, in some, maybe just hanging out with other Christians, mm-hmm. you know, and, and loving on them and bearing one another's yeah. burdens. I know. like what you were saying earlier about being a disciple, like not just hearing, but going all in and learning and growing and like committing yourself to it. Yeah, right? well, I mean, to me, discipleship, another way I heard somebody else describe it that I like is um, life on life. Okay. And that's what Jesus did. So if we model his discipleship, like he spent intimate time with mm-hmm. you know disciples and then there was three that he spent more time with i think it was peter james and john mm-hmm. um and so i think that our discipleship should mirror jesus discipleship mm-hmm. so you know it's finding people who are new to the faith and kind of taking them under your wing mm-hmm. you know and, and it's talking about regular life stuff like talking about sin and be praying for them um mm-hmm. and helping them devise ways to conquer sin in their life Um, what they do with their finances, Mm -hmm. how they look at and treat their job, Mm -hmm. their boss, their employees, their coworkers, how they treat their wife, Mm -hmm. you know, their children. Um, Just all these things that that we encounter throughout life, you know, God should be a part of that. Mm -hmm. And as I'm discipling someone, we would be having intentional conversations about these areas of their life. I will be opening my life up in these areas and sharing them, my failures, and also mm-hmm. sharing the successes with them in hopes that they will be learning and growing how to incorporate the word of God into every facet of their life. Mm-hmm. And then at some point, like they become mature enough to where they can start discipling someone. Mm-hmm. And then it just ah, it yeah. just keeps going. Yeah. You know, so that's. That's the, my framework and mindset mm-hmm. when it comes to discipleship. So using <clears> our <throat> analogy again about Yellowstone, it's here's yeah. how you live in the take forest. Yeah, here's yeah. how you take care of it. Yeah. Here's how you thrive. Here's how you keep this thing going. Yeah, yeah right? without a doubt. I mean, yep. yeah, yeah. I mean, it's opening your life up to them, yeah. the good, the bad, and the ugly. And mm-hmm. then, like, them doing the same. Mm-hmm. And then you guys looking at the Bible and seeing mm-hmm. how should we be responding? How, how should we be Yeah. Doing? 
helping to reorient your life so that you're not falling into the same problem yeah, so yeah. that you're living right side up again. Yeah, and to me, what is not discipleship is this big me, little you. Mm-hmm. You know, What do you so mean many, by that? Well, there are so many people that have a lot of Bible knowledge mm-hmm. and they want to spend time with the person. And it's like me always instructing them on what the biblical thing to do is. Okay. <clears throat> there's nothing wrong with that. But to me, there's no intimacy. Mm-hmm. It seems like sterile or robotic. Mm. It's like, I, at least me, the way I'm wired, I have a tendency more to gravitate towards trust and listen to someone that says, hey, we're going to talk about, let, let's talk about finances. Let's mm-hmm. talk about being generous and giving. Mm-hmm. Let's talk about saving. Let's talk about spending. Mm-hmm. And man, look, here's where I failed at in my life. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? These people I'm talking about that is not discipleship, they never disclose okay. anything yeah, that they've yeah. done that's wrong. It's like they're putting on this image that they're almost like without sin and mm-hmm. they're perfect. Mm-hmm. You know, or they'll say, Well, you know what it took me a long time. Well, why not share some things? Yeah, yeah. Why not why not open up? Yeah. yeah. You know, and, and to me that's a sign of immaturity. Yeah. We're shoulder to shoulder on this journey going. Yeah, but but that's together. not how they are. No, no, that's you know, not if how they're they are. here another yeah, person yeah, is down yeah. here somewhere. Yeah. And I don't, I don't jive with that. Yeah. You know what I mean? I, I don't wanna like just learn a bunch of facts. I can read those mm-hmm. in books. I mm-hmm. want to be able to ask a person questions and say, man, like that happened to you. Like, man, I'm, man, I feel terrible. You know what I mean? Or maybe it's something current that you're going through. Just because I'm, I'm new to the faith don't mean I, I got this. We serve the same God. Our yeah. prayers can equally be as powerful. We have the same why not, problems. Why not share yeah. what, what's great. going on with me with this newer person? Yeah. And they can be praying for me. Yeah. You know, and that's modeling yeah. something for them, yeah. right? See, if if we model for other people, to me, they have a tendency to grasp it and then model mm. it for the next person. Mm. And so if you just model a bunch of facts, yeah. that's what their discipleship is going to be like because yeah. that's what they learned and that's what they yeah. know. I'm always astounded by it, like when I'm reading the Gospels where Jesus, like he's with these almost bumbling idiot disciples and he's telling them that. <laughs> but yeah. then in the next chapter, he's sending them off on their own to go do real legit yeah. ministry, facing demons, yeah. preaching to hostile crowds. And it's like, what? Yeah, you don't have to be a spiritual juggernaut. Yeah. He's just, he's, but he's sending them out there. Yeah. Like, yeah. And, but, but he's also, yeah. I think that's, that's a great point that you highlight of how to, how to do discipleship. You don't have to be superior. You don't have to have it all together. And this is a great parenting tip too. Yeah. yeah right. Yeah. When parenting with your with your kids, like sharing those struggles, because you yeah. have the same struggles. They're just in yeah. Um, yeah. I would maybe say, different degrees. I would say in parenting, you might want to be careful, like how much and what you share, mm-hmm. just because. It's your child. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know what I mean? Even if it's a somewhat adult child. you know, That's there, true. That's there are true. some things that need to be sacred. Like if you're having marital yeah, problems, yeah. you want to share that with yeah, your that's true. son or daughter. But just to be saying, hey, man, you know, and, and they know that, right? Yeah. If they live in the house with you, they know if you got little issues going mm-hmm. on. And you can say, hey, man, like marriage is tough. Mm-hmm. You know, I'm struggling right now. Yeah. And, and if you were, I heard a guy say he was... He was saying that he saw, he observed his um, teenage son disrespecting his mom, mm. but um, the way that the the dad approached this was he went to his son and he, and he said, "You know, I observed you disrespecting uh, your mom, and you know where you learned that from." And the kid was like frozen, and the dad said, "You learned it from me mm. because I do that too." Man. And uh, I just want to apologize to you, and I give you my teenage son mm. permission. To call me out. Well, first he said, I don't ever want to hear you do that again. Yep. And you will be punished for it. But if I ever do it, I give you permission to call me out on wow. it too. Now, see, that's so, powerful right there. Yeah, man. it's that very powerful. That makes me come to tears, man. Yeah. That is powerful because yeah. our children mimic what they see us do yep. most of the time. Yep. You know, and so we have yep. to look no farther for someone to blame than ourselves. Yep. And to be humble enough as the mentor, as a leader, as yeah. a disciple maker yeah. to admit that yep. I still struggle. I have these issues and I'm teaching you things through my behavior. I mean, that's, that's huge for a young yep. man to hear his father, you know, say something like that and to do something yeah. like that, man. And so that, you know, yeah, I'm, I'm excited. I got a couple of young men I want to really invest in that I just I've been knowing for mm-hmm. some years, but I really want to invest in them. Um, they're, you know, in their mid twenties mm-hmm. and, um, I'm excited, you know, to start trying mm-hmm. to do some discipleship with mm-hmm. them. And of course, 
you know, that has to be a mutual thing, right? Mm -hmm. You know, they have to want to, you know, hang out with you, kind of, you know, listen and learn and stuff mm -hmm. like that. So I would say don't try to disguise discipleship as something else. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah. Because if you do and they find out, then they're going to feel like everything's been a lie. Mm -hmm. You know, and so like for me with these two young men, they're not Christians, but, you know, I want to, you know, hang out with them maybe once every couple of weeks, once a month. Just say, hey, man, I'm a I'm an older guy. I've experienced some issues. You guys are young guys. You're experiencing issues. Man, maybe we can just have some real conversations and I can share some things with mm -hmm. you where I failed mm -hmm. and where I succeeded. And maybe it'll be some benefit to yeah. you. But, you know, the answers to all these woes mm -hmm. is Jesus. Yeah. You know, and I would like to have some conversations with you about that mm -hmm. and to answer any questions. I'm not going to force anything mm -hmm. down your throat, but I will let you know I want to have some intentional conversations mm -hmm. about that, too. And and I hope one day, you know, maybe you'll go to church with me. So mm -hmm. I'm going to preface us getting together yeah. with that. But when we present like this, not to keep going, but to keep going, when we present like this worldview in some sense, it's extremely like relieving for people to hear, for young guys, maybe especially, who, who have no knowledge of this, but then suddenly you're saying, no, these behaviors are destructive, and, and this is the right way to live, and what your parent did to you or what your friends did to you was actually wrong. Let me, let me validate what you're going through. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, and that helping to uh, reorient them and set them up yeah. to see life clearly and hopefully yeah. the blinders well, will lift up. One of the up. problems I find is, so these are two young men that, you know, live in the suburbs and then I look at these young men I speak to in jails and prisons. Yeah. Grew up two totally different lifestyles, right, maybe 25, 30 minutes wow. or 25, yeah. 30 miles apart. Yeah. So not very far, but totally different mm -hmm. lifestyles and mindsets. But they both are exhibiting what they've learned in mm -hmm. their surroundings and now that's how they're living their yeah. life, right? And so yeah. they don't know of another way. Mm -hmm. So one of the problems, if not the problem is with people is I learned this way growing up. Mm -hmm. And unless I adamantly decide I want to live a different way, which does happen. Mm -hmm. But if that doesn't happen, and even if it does, like unless it's the Christ-like way, mm -hmm. it's still not going to be the yeah. best way or a godly way. But at least for the ones that are just imitating what they learned, they know of no other way. And so that's how I kind of go into things. I was talking to a couple 16, 17 year olds mm -hmm. yesterday, you know, been in prison a couple of years and got a couple more to go. And I'm like, why? Like, why are you doing what you do? Well, this is what I know. Yeah, this is all I know. And I'm like, yep, mm -hmm. that's good that you know that. Right. Mm -hmm. A lot of people don't realize it. At mm -hmm. least they realize that's all they know. And I say, you know what? I like to present to you a different way. Mm -hmm. You know, there's actually a bunch of different ways, yeah. but there's only one the way. Yeah. You know, I like to present a different way. And I started talking about that. And he was looking at me like I was crazy, like mm. this. Yeah. You know, just different things that came up um, and they were saying, you wouldn't do this. You wouldn't do that. And I was like, I once would because that's the only way I knew. But mm. now I know there's another way. There's a be there's a better the best way, way. Yeah. you know, and it's something that pleases God. That's why yeah. it's the best way. So this is how I yep. think now, and this is how I operate. They were just kind of blown away, yeah, you know, because they don't know there's mm -hmm. another way. Yep. So our problem, God's solution, and then our response. That's uh, that's part of the gospel. That and, and and we never leave that. We never leave those three. We spend the rest of our lives uh, exploring that and growing in that, and bringing other people along as well. Yeah. Amen. All right, this is Bumper Sticker Faith. Bumper Sticker Faith, man. Hopefully you guys picked up on something. Um, If you learned something, if you got any questions, comments, any pushback, man, feel free to you know email us at bumperstickerfaith at gmail.com or you can leave a comment mm -hmm. or whatever, you know, but hopefully this has some value for you. Uh, maybe you can share this with other people. Maybe you've been thinking about evangelism and discipleship and, you know, I, I, I got a lot more to say about it. I don't know about yeah, Sam, yeah, but um, <laughs> if you want to know more, like, let us know. Maybe we'll do another episode where we talk more nuts and bolts when it mm. comes to. Um, there's a, a book by, Lee. I think his name is Leroy Imes, mm. The Lost Art of Discipleship. It's an old book, but it's a, it actually has a strategy. Like a, it's like a, it's like a cake mix, right? So it's kind of <laughs> what you were talking about earlier, but it's not sterile. Yeah. You know, yeah. it's a strategy about how you intimately make disciples. And it's, mm. it's the best book I've read on discipleship. Mm. It's probably like only the second or third book I've read too, <laughs> but it's a good book. It's called, book is called The Lost Art of Discipleship. Mm. And la the guy's last name is Imes, E-I-M-E-S. Mm. So check that out. Check some other books out, but it's good being with y'all. Hope you have a great week. Peace. Peace.
Yeah. <laughs>